Hey everyone, welcome to this week's Azure Update. It's the 5th of September. Quite a lot of updates this week, especially around Logic Apps. New videos this week. So I did an overview of Entra ID. More and more as we talk about agents and data, we hear about enterprise authentication, Entra ID. So I just did a 10 minute video, just going over what it is and why we care so much about that enterprise authentication. Then I did another pretty quick video on the Zero Trust Workshop. So every company security is top of mind. When you hear about the Zero Trust, we have sort of lease privilege, assume breach, all these key tenants to it, but how do you get to it? And so this workshop is a really nice free offering that helps give you an actionable plan around the key pillars of Zero Trust to help you succeed in it. So I just go over quickly what that is. So on to what's new on the compute side. So the app service premium V4 offerings have gone GA. So remember the whole point of app service is it provides a fully managed platform as a service for running Windows and Linux based web stacks. So what the V4 offerings have is it's a set of new SKUs based on the newest, fastest AMD based processors. In addition, you get NVMe local storage, which is super, super fast, super, super low latency. And they are available in both general purpose and memory optimized offerings. So you'll see an M variant, which is the memory optimized. Remember memory optimized just means the ratio of cores to memory, you get a greater amount of memory. Now they start with one virtual CPU and four gigabytes of memory up to 32 virtual CPUs and 256 gigabytes of memory. They support availability zones and compared to the premium V3, they have a 25% better price to performance. So for most people, I'm gonna look at moving from the V3 to the V4. So for the confidential compute based on the Intel processors, so the DCE V5 and the ECE V5, they're being retired um, basically next week. So 12th of September, 2025, you will not be able to create new instances. Instead, you need to go and move to the new V6 versions um, that offer those sort of whole VM encryption capabilities. Logic Apps Standard, now has the automated test framework in GA. So the whole point of the framework is as a developer, it lets me build, test and maintain the workflow definitions I use for my logic apps using a set of defined unit tests that run directly inside VS Code. So it's all inside VS Code, I'm doing all this management. And it gives me the ability to do mock actions. And the benefit of a mock action is as I'm doing my, my testing, it's isolating my workflow from real production. For example, I have inline code, I'm calling a function, I'm doing an XML operation, but it won't actually go and talk to production. It won't actually call the thing that could have a production impact. Instead, I set up mock results. So when I make the call, instead of talking to the system, it will just send me back this set of results. So it lets me really go and test in as close to reality as I can without risking actually changing production things. Also Logic App Standard. So for the .NET 8, I have custom code support. So I can embed .NET 8 code directly in my workflows. So if I had more advanced logic scenarios, if I'm gonna do custom business logic, if I wanted to custom parse data, validate data calculations, well, now I can just embed the code directly in my Logic App workflow, and I have to go and call something externally. Logic App Standard Business Process Tracking lets me track key data properties throughout the workflow. So I specify key points in time in the workflow, and then it will emit to an Azure Data Explorer instance the values of the data, so I can then analyze and visualize that later on to help me uh, maybe track, hey, what's actually happening in the environment. Logic Apps Hybrid Deployment Model has gone GA. So that lets me now control where the various integration workloads will actually execute. So that could be customer managed infrastructure on premises. It could be in private clouds. It could be in other clouds. So this would be really useful if I can't just use the regular Azure 
uh, hosting to execute the things. Maybe it's based on regulatory requirements, data privacy, maybe proximity to the data for latency requirements. But now with that hybrid model, I can choose where I actually go and run it. Logic App Standard also has a new enhanced data mapper in GA. This is really a V2 experience. So it uses the VS Code Logic Apps extension. So I can still open and edit the V1 maps. It works on Mac OS. They've updated the documentation, but it's just an improved overall experience when I'm working on those data mappings. And the Logic Apps now supports organizational templates in preview. So as an organization, I have my own automation patterns. And what I want to do is make them available either for the entire tenant or maybe just for specific subscriptions in addition to the built-in templates. So it's going to help me share and reuse certain sets of automation pattern I create across the organization. Logic Apps Standard uh, now has the Confluent Kafka connector in preview. So that's gonna help me send and receive messages between Logic Apps and Confluent Kafka. Now I can use a message as a trigger, i.e. I'm gonna receive a message, but I can also use it as an action, i.e. I want to publish a message. So both those things will work. API uh, management V2 tier metrics and auto scaling has gone GA. Remember, API management provides runtime capabilities for my APIs. So rather than talking directly to a back end, I can catalog, expose them through API management. Now the V2 tiers, so that's basic, standard, and premium, include gateway metrics. So that would show me for all of the different instances of my gateways, I'll see my CPU use, my memory use. I can then use those metrics to define auto scale rules to increase or decrease the number of gateway instances to make sure I'm always adjusting based on the amount of work that's coming in so I can optimize the amount of money I'm actually spending. Um, API Management Premium V2 now has workspace and workspace gateways in GA. So the whole point of workspaces is, is that I'm gonna have different teams maybe they want to be able to manage their own APIs, a certain level of autonomy, so they can deal with their APIs, their products, their subscriptions. But I still want a centralized enterprise overall management, which is the API management layer. So the workspace, I give a workspace to a certain group or sets of groups, so they can manage their APIs, products, and subscriptions. And then I can associate particular gateways to a workspace. So then only that workspace's APIs will be exposed by those gateway instances. It can help control noisy neighbor, uh, make sure I'm getting the performance I actually want for those sets of APIs. So that is now GA. API Management V2 also has now extended the support of MCP, so the Model Context Protocol. Model Context Protocol, remember, is all about, hey, I'm writing an AI app, and I wanna be able to give the large language model maybe knowledge, tools, maybe prompt examples. And MCP provides a standard way to not only talk to that other knowledge, those other tools, but also then describe them to the large language model so it can ask me to go and run things on their behalf. So now I can very easily bring my MCP compliance services from Azure Logic Apps, from Functions, from Langchain, from Custom Runtimes under APIM. So then I get the APIM governance, security, monitoring, discovery, et cetera. I can now in GA upgrade my Gen 1 Azure VMs to Gen 2 with trusted launch enabled. So remember, Gen 1 was BIOS based. Gen 2 is UEFI based. UEFI means I can get a virtual TPM. Virtual TPM means I can do things like secure boot. That gives me an attestation from the hardware all the way into the operating system. So that means I'm protected from a lots of boot kits, root kits, various pieces of malware. But they're a different structure. UEFI and BIOS have different boot structures. The volumes are different. So now I can upgrade. Now the virtual machine must be trusted launch supported and the operating system must support things like the secure boot. And there are utilities that will now convert my Windows and Linux volume configurations from BIOS to UEFI based. And then I can convert to a Gen 2 trusted launch Azure VM configuration. So there are a few steps involved. There is going to be some downtime, but I can actually now go and do those upgrades.
on the networking side. So Azure Front Door Standard and Premium, remember Azure Front Door is that global load balancing layer seven sets of capability. It can cache information. It will go and prefetch the, the whole files. It does split TCP, so it terminates the connection at its edge to speed up the various pieces of performance, uses uh, any cast for its IP addresses. Well, now it's available in the Azure China regions. Remember, Azure China is operated by 21 Fionet. Also for Azure China, so the Azure Content Delivery Network is being retired. So beginning of December, you need to move off of that and move to something else, namely this thing that we just mentioned. So go and move to it very, very soon. I think by November 15th, if you don't move to it by November 15th, you will automatically be migrated from Azure CDN to Azure Front Door if your configuration is compatible and it's been used in the last three months. So obviously if it's a dormant CDN that you're not using, it will not be moved. But if it has been used in the last three months and if it can be moved, it will be moved. But I would still honestly recommend you manually uh, do those moves. Azure Virtual Network Manager, which provides you that centralized, very large scale management of your virtual network's connectivity, routing, addressing, traffic control, and more. Well, now at a subnet level, I can configure multiple address spaces to a single subnet. I don't have to empty the subnet first. So that's gonna be really useful if maybe I wanna be able to dynamically make the subnet bigger. I need to expand it. So I can initially be very efficient with the address space I give to the subnet because I've got a finite address space. But then if I find that subnet is getting busier and it's filling up, well, I can add another address space to it so I can continue to add workloads. Storage side, so Azure Ultra Disk has got price reductions in specific regions. So it's UK South, Central US, and West US too. So the reduction is around the capacity, IOPS, and throughput. Remember, with Ultra Disk, you pay separately for each of those items. You have different dials, so I can tune the capacity, the IOPS, and the throughput. I can dynamically change the IOPS and throughput as I need to. The price reduction varies by region. So basically, go and look at the pricing page. On the database side, so the Azure Managed MySQL Flexible now has a near zero downtime for planned maintenance provided it has been enabled for high availability. So this near zero downtime is GA. Now, what this means is it won't disrupt applications connectivity to the database or impact the performance of the database during these operations. Because what happens is when I have that high availability, it now uses an Azure standard load balancer instead of just relying on DNS updates. And so as it switches between, which is the primary while it's doing the maintenance, my application doesn't really see anything. There's no noticeable downtime to the application, but I do have to have high availability enabled. Miscellaneous. So the OpenAI GPT-4.0 real-time API audio models are now GA in the Azure OpenAI in Foundry. So the whole point of the real-time API is it's speech to speech. So audio in, audio out. So my conversational interactions. It now has a better ability to follow the various interactions. It better can track tone, pacing, escalation. I can switch languages. It has new voices. The audio quality is higher. And I can easily now do even things like adding images, calling custom code. It has different types of turn taking capabilities and just a whole bunch more. Playwright Workspaces in Azure App Testing has gone GA. So remember, Playwright Workspace lets me run end-to-end -end tests across, for example, different multiple browsers, multiple devices in parallel to give me confidence in the functional ability of my application. So I'm making changes to my app, and it's checked functionally it still operates. So Playwright Workspace lets me run functional tests end-to-end -end across my entire um, workload using different browsers, different devices. And what happens in the Azure app testing, it combines that with Azure load testing, which can do the performance part of the testing. So with the playwright and load testing, it does both the functional and your performance testing. And probably the biggest update of all, 
Microsoft Basic has been open source. So yes, the 50 year old source code for the 6502 basic programming language is now available on GitHub. So uh, go nuts. That was it. As always, until next video, take care.